Well, hello, or better yet, YOLO. Good to see you, my friends. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Monday, November 28th. Now, every day right about now, I sit down and I get my pile together of hot OTC and penny stocks that I want to share with you. I'm a day trader. I'm out there all day watching the markets, and I see a lot happening. Now, some days, like today, it is slow, but there's always something popping somewhere, so I've always got something to share. Now, when I say OTC and penny stocks, I'm not repeating myself. Penny stocks are any stock under five bucks, regardless of what market they're on. There's a ton of them on the OTC as well as the major exchanges. And I like those penny stocks on the major exchanges. There's no transaction fees to trade there, so you don't have to try to recoup your transaction fees. Plus, that gives you the freedom to trade the way you like. You see the price go up, nobody's bidding. You can buy one share just to push the price up, and it doesn't cost you anything to make that smart move. And your major exchanges is where all the money is sitting. So yeah, I like trading on the major exchanges. Now, OTC is a primary place for me to do my hunting. Matter of fact, all that news right there comes from the OTC market. There's about a week's worth there. That's news I've looked at. Uh, oldest is up at the top, newest is down here at the bottom. There's no public offerings, no financials. These are events, mergers, acquisitions, uplistings, expansion, all that juicy type of news always looking for and if you haven't had time to comb through the news you don't want to go back a week I've already done it for you there's your cheat sheet right there enjoy now when I do my research on OTC stocks this is my go-to site folks you want a secret weapon it's the otcmarkets.com website it is the only site I know of on the entire internet that is updated every single day for every single OTC stock by FINRA and the SEC that's that information we are constantly always looking for and if you're doing that all the time with Google you're wasting a ton of time you're putting out a lot of extra effort start here most of the time you're going to find what you want the first time you find it and if you don't the internet is always out there waiting for you but please start here you'll find research isn't as hard as it seems when you're out in the big big vast land of google all right let's take a look at how our otc market finished today i'm going to go ahead and refresh this you can be on this site all day bouncing around but if you don't refresh it these top numbers up here do not refresh all right, what do we got for today? Um, a little better on the share volume. Everything else is still down. Dollar volume is at 1.4 billion. We need to be at 2 billion at least. Share volume, 6.7. I think we were in the sixes. That was as far as we got last week, but we were stuck in the fives, which is really a death trap for us. The market doesn't do well under 10, and five is half of that, so it's doing half as well. Our trades, God, we can't get away from 250 to 300,000 trades, and we're right on top of 250. So as I said, it was a slow market today. But as I also said, there's always stocks moving somewhere. You've just got to know where to look. So I got a couple to share with you and one that I am, well, working on from cleaning house. I've got a lot of personal stocks I've been accumulating <laughs> over the last two years, and I've been having to work on them now, trying to figure out how to get out of some of these dead horses. And I got one of these I want to share with you. I don't think it's a dead horse anymore. I heard it go, nah. So I think there's life. Let's go see what I got. All right, let's trot on up to our first stock here. This is ticker VCXAW. That W on the end there represents the fact that this is a warrant on the major exchange for another company. Now, a warrant is a stock you can trade like any other stock. Get in, get out anytime you want, take your gains, be happy. But it also has the bonus of being a promissory note. A coupon it allows you the right to buy a share of this company stock at a discounted price way in the future anywhere from two to five years the stock may be at a dollar and they say well when it hits a dollar 25 the warrants go active and you can use them and you can buy shares at a price of a dollar 40 well, at $1.25, you're not going to cash in your warrant, but you could if you wanted to. But four years down the road, the stock is worth $25 a share, and you can buy a share for $1.40. Give them one of your warrants and $1.40, and boom, you got your share of stock, and you can sell it right now and take all of that profit. But if you're not interested in the warrant, just trade it as a stock. Now, this is the company it is a warrant to. 
This is BCXA without the W. This is 10X Capital Venture Acquisition. They are on the NASDAQ. This is a blank check company, also known as a SPAC special purpose acquisition company. These are companies that come onto the major exchanges with no business. They're not making any money. As you can see here, they are a shell company right now. These come onto the market looking for a deal. They're kind of like building a big warehouse that they have no intentions of ever using. They just want to sell it or lease it. They want to make some money. And they get a time limit to do this. They get 18 to 24 months to consummate and close a deal. And if they do not, all the investors get their money back. I know that sounds crazy. You didn't know there was a money back guarantee on the market, did you? Yes, there is. If you invest in a blank check company or a SPAC and they don't do what they're supposed to, you get your money back minus a little smidge of a bank fee, but it's really, really small. Now, when they come on the market, they are $10 a share. And the the stock itself, the common shares, are not active to bid on. Now, you can bid. You see right now we're at $9.82. Now, just for the sake of conversation, say the company liquidated right now. You would get your full $10 for every single share because this price is not what it is. It is $10 until they close the deal. Then the stock goes active. So, what happens here is when the company has good news, the stock doesn't move maybe a penny or two but it doesn't do anything but the warrant does the warrant gets all the activity they're normally super cheap and it only takes a little volume to make these things jump because of the spreads and that's why i like these now this company particularly had a deal back on april 1st april fools the stock responded nicely it bounced up but the warrant got real weird it had been sitting at about a buck and took a huge drop and it's like why would you do that on good news and it sat down there for four five six seven days when i decided this looked like an opportunity with all that good news and the deal coming on the warrants were going to become valuable people were going to want them well, it never did come up, and then all of a sudden, they actually canceled the deal. Now I was holding a dead horse. Now they had a time limit, and you don't get your money back for your warrants. You only get your money back for your shares of common stock. Well, surprisingly enough, at the beginning of this month, woohoo, they made another deal. Whew, that was a close one. As a matter of fact, I got the news right here. On November 2nd, it came out. They made a deal with African Agriculture. They are gonna be merging with them. This is a West African company. They tell us down here that AAGR manages extensive farmland in West Africa, including an alfalfa farm. It currently operates on approximately 750 acres of a total of 62,000 acres of dedicated farmland in Senegal. With approximately a half a billion acres of farmland under contract, in Niger. Right now, the alfalfa market was worth about $21 billion last year. The company itself is worth $450 million as of this deal, and they've got $100 million of equity line of credit to work with, and they expect this deal to close the first half of 2023. Now, we're not looking to invest in this company. We're just looking to make a profit off of this warrant moving and moving strong. But keep in mind, this may be a company in Africa, but they're dealing with alfalfa, which is a strong product because of all of its protein. The food sector is growing right now, and you can never have too much food. And it would be nice to have a huge continent like Africa doing that work for us. So, Whatever the company is about, whatever they're doing now, it's supposed to affect the warrant, and the warrant looks juicy for recovery. Let's go take a look at that chart. As you most likely expected, we are using TD Ameritrade's free trading platform. This is Think or Swim, also known as TOS. All you got to do is sign up at TD Ameritrade for their free trading account, and they give this to you free. And all you got to do is keep your account open to use it. So we are looking at VCXAW. This is the warrant for 10X Cap Venture Acquisition Core. Now I've got up a one week, three year chart which shows everything from day one. Keep in mind that every single bar you see is a full week of trading activity. Very first week she was on the market, she came on at about a dollar. She had an all time high here of $4.40. 
tumbled from that all the way down here to a dollar, which is where she sat for about two months. So I put another support line right there, definitely strong. She then slipped down here and hasn't had any real support, just been dribbling down lower and lower until she actually hit a low bubble of one cents. Now, let's come on down to that one year, one day view. So you see, we got a high now, our 52 week high of $3.80. 36 cents get up there and stick there you go and here is our one dollar now i want to zoom in on this area and talk to you about that so we're going to come down to the six month four hour view right there this is april fools that is the day the good news came out and the stock went up nicely but as you can see not so nice for the warrant she dropped here from about a dollar down to 60 cents after market she kept falling the day after she kept falling and on and on and it was about right here six seven days into it i said this is silly this is great news. They just made a deal. The warrant should be worth more now, so it's got to go up. So I was expecting after this drop to cross across the bottom and then come right back up, curving back up right to our dollar, right back to it. So I got in at about 53 cents initially, and I thought I'd get myself about 100% gain. But it didn't happen that way. Even with the good news, she kept on dribbling. And then somewhere in here, I'm not quite sure where, somewhere in all of this dribble down, the news came in that the deal with Prime Block, which is who they were merging with, which I thought was a good company, was canceled. Now I am stuck with a dead horse. <laughs> just laying there. Now I am forced to wait for them to make a deal. And if they don't make a deal, well, I've lost my money or I'm going to have to sell at a loss because they don't give back your money when they liquidate if you're holding warrants, only the common stock. So she kept dribbling all the way down. She did it that one cent. And right now she is at four cents. And I think it's a great place to be. Now, I guess I could draw another support right here. There does seem to be some consolidation right in this area. And that takes us to 47 cents. Oh my God. Looks like we got another one right in this vicinity right here. Supports and resistances are drawn where your price changes direction. It's coming down, stops, and goes back up. Or it's coming up and stops and goes back down. So that's what we're looking for. That one is at 20 cents. Let's come on down to our 20-day, one-hour view. All right. She has been hugging that 200-day SMA. But look at the activity. We were at a low bubble here of 2 cents, and she went all the way to 12 cents in about 12 hours. That's a 600% gain, and she came right back down to her 200-day SMA. Now, something you want to keep in mind with warrants, they're on the major exchanges. So we can trade these aftermarket, pre-market hours. And as you can see, there's lots of activity in that period of time. You don't need any special permissions or special qualifications. You can jump on in there and start trading. The only thing you've got to remember is when you're buying the shares, you have to trade your time period from day to extension, EXT. It can be GTC, good till canceled plus extension. It can be day plus extension or just extension all by itself. But if you don't have extension in there, your order will be ignored if you put it in during the aftermarket pre-market hours. So she's been hanging on top of the 200 all these 20 days. We did have a slip right here. She came back and right now she's sitting right up underneath it. Now we've got all sorts of let levels we could be drawing here. We've got one right across this area right in here. We've got one up here for sure, right? You can definitely see this hitting their heads, hitting their heads, hitting their heads. So we're at four cents right now. We got one at six cents. That's a 50% jump. We got one here at eight cents. That's a hundred percent jump. We got one up here at almost 20 cents. That's 500% gains. We've got one here at 48. That is 1,200% gains. And then all the way up here at a dollar, which is going to be close to 2,500% gains if this thing starts to move. We've got the good news. Warrants are worth more once the company has a deal on the table. Now, once they consummate the deal, the stock can start moving too. But that's not going to affect the warrant. The warrant and the stock are separate. They are definitely separate, but what happens to the stock normally happens to the warrant. Not always, as you just saw. So, 
I am in this one and I am averaging down right now. I've averaged down through the period. I bought in at 30 cents. I bought in at uh, 17 cents, but I could still average down some more. So I was actually looking today. I saw my low here of, uh, well, we had a low back here, right here of two cents. And I thought she might get down to that. It's actually two and a half cents. So I put in two and a half cents, but it never got that low. We hit uh, three today and she came right back up to four and the problem is is that the spread they are asking six cents it's at four cents but they want six cents for it and I just didn't want to pay six cents so I was very patient today and I'm watching this but even at six cents there are is a lot of gains above us to be grabbed folks do your own DD I think you'll come to the same conclusion now here's a company that had a great day today and had big news on Friday. This is ticker IDIG, International Digital Holdings. I saw the news on Friday and it was one of those pieces of news you just go, ooh, really? Well, I didn't think about it again today. I just forgot about it and silly me. God, what a time to forget. She finished the day at 17 cents with over 183% gains. God, she is on the pink limited tier. This is a bad thing. It means they're late on one or more of their financials. I've already looked. It's the very last one for September. They get that in. They'll get that taken care of and get back to pink in a big hurry. They do have a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. Those are important. I mean, I tell you, it's not that important if you're day trading, but they are important all the time. So it's good to see them there at any time. This company is a shell company currently. That means they're not making any money. They don't have a business. Everybody knows that. It's on the up and up. They're just looking for something to happen. And that's what the news is on Friday. Now, I don't remember seeing anything in there about money, but I think that's what it's all about. And this shell status should be falling off pretty soon. So this is the only business description I can find of them. There are a few pieces of news, that's where I'll normally jump into to get a description, but they've only got three for this year. The rest are like seven, eight, nine years old. I'm not gonna trust those. So this is what we get. International Digital Holdings is a holding company for subsidiaries with unique products and market strategies. All right, let's see what the relative volume was today around that news on Friday. Really? I don't know if I'm disappointed or surprised. From 2,000 to 68,000. I mean, it is big news, it really is. So we got 34 times her regular volume. That's big, no doubt about that. But these are very inconsequential numbers. We haven't even hit 100,000 shares yet. I'm interested to know what the float is on this thing then. Whoa, -ho! now, seems to me I did some more research. We got unrestricted shares of 16 million, which is what I normally go to. Sometimes it's high, like now. That's the float, folks, right there. 2.2 million. It's a micro float, folks. It's super duper small. The news is big news. I am going to share with you. I think they should have had more volume today. I think it's under the radar. I'll let you be the judge of that. But there's your float. 2.2 million and she had 183 percent gains on only 68,000 shares that's impressive let's take a look at her financials why there's nothing there it's empty they're a shell company so you can save yourself that when you come over here to their disclosures remembering that they are a pink limited they're late you can see they're going by multiples of three. So we got nine, 12, three, six. I'm looking over here for the dates, for the periods that they're filing for. There is a three, uh, what happened here? From six to three, three, six, three, six. They had to do them over. If you see them doubled, it's not an accident. It means that they had to do them again. And that probably stalled them from getting September's out because they had to redo these. So we're missing the nine. So once they get September in there, hopefully that doesn't hold them up either. We'll go back to pink and we'll be coming out of shell status. She'll be a hot mama. Let's see what we got over there for news. All right, we got two pieces of news here. All right, right here, 2013. That's as close as we can get. Then you get one in April, which is one I want to look at, and then today's news. So we're going to jump into that first piece of news that came out April 6th. 
International Digital Holdings announced today the company has retired all of its long-term debt, which was $2.4 million. They exchanged it for a bunch of shares. The conversion price at the time was $0.03 cents per share. And on that day that they did it, the price was just a little over $0.02. Cents. So, the first week of April, it was just over $0.02. Cents. Right now, we are at $0.17. Cents. Now, they made this deal back when they had nothing on the table. They were a shell company doing absolutely nothing. They had nothing to show for themselves. So we see she is starting to grow now, and we have something to show for it now. This is the news, as short and brief as it is. I know we want more. Damn on! This came out November 25th. On November 14th, International Digital Holdings completed the acquisition of Luna Mobile Inc. Right, I'm giving you a moment to think about that, right? Headquartered in Sarasota, Florida, Luna was acquired through a tax-free share exchange for 600 million common shares. Now, they don't give us any more information, but they do give us a website. Pull up that website, and it is the Luna phone. You were thinking phone, weren't you? Absolutely. This is the company that is working with Microsoft. They've got this very long, I think it's called a perpetuated contract with Microsoft for their technology and it falls under the umbrella of Microsoft's patent portfolio. That's how big of a deal this is. You've heard of Luna. They make great cameras on their phones. They make phones. This is the actual site. Uh, this was just the first page I jumped to. I'm not going to say it's the best site. I'm not going to say it's the best phone, but this company isn't making any money. This isn't a startup company. They're working with big boys like Microsoft, getting royalties for the uh, technology that they're letting Microsoft use in their devices. And now this company's got it, who hasn't been making any money at all. All sounds good to me, folks, and there's nothing more to look at but the chart. So let's go do it. You guessed it, this is IDIG, except this is a one-year, one-day chart. Now you can see she's pretty much been flatlining right down here between uh, two cents and five cents, a little higher, a little lower. But here, this was completely a different day. This was the launching. This is when they went to the moon. This went from two cents to 51 cents. You're looking at over 2,500% gains. Every $100 bill down here would have got you $2,500 up here at the top. This also happens to be the day of that first piece of news I shared with you. And that was the first piece of news investors has had in almost 10 years. So yeah, they were excited. They're back. They're alive. They were excited. It did come down and it has been sitting down here all this time. Uh, for the last few days. But look here, folks. We are at 17 cents right now. One, two, three, four days ago, it hit a low of double zero three. Double zero three. Folks, I'm having a hard time figuring that out. That That is thousands of percent gains in just th three days. This has a float of 2.2 million. It doesn't take much for this thing to take off. It's got a little fuse, a little volume and it takes off. We have had this thing at 68,000 shares today. I don't know what it was the days before, and the technicals are screaming. Look at all the technicals on the four-hour chart. Every single one of them is pushing up like she is ready to take off again. Let's come on down to that four-hour for a quick view. Not a whole lot of difference here. You can see that low bubble and the launch. Wow, incredible. Let's look at our one-hour, 20-day view. She's been steady climbing. Steady climbing, she was down here at two cents. That was, uh, ooh, that was all the way back on the 17th. And then that was Friday. So nothing was going on because, well, nothing was going on. And then Friday, news came out. And it jumped from that two cents up to 20 cents and has been steadily working her way up. Now she's at 17 cents after hitting that high of 20 cents. I'd look for her to break that 20 cents. That would be a good sign that she is gonna continue to grow. But honestly, I think she's going to continue to grow. This company has just gotten with Luna, not a startup company. They got their own phone brand out there. They got their own technology being used on Microsoft products, and they are literally underneath the Microsoft umbrella of patent protection. So this company is going to be coming out of shell status, should get that 
uh, pink limited up to pink here anytime and should start making revenues so I think with this little itty bitty float you really do need to keep your eye on this she is on an uptrend right now and I don't think she's going to go steady I think she's going to go parabolic and you really don't want to miss that IDIG for the ride of your life don't say I didn't warn you buckle up so here's another company that had a great day today. This is ticker SPRJ, Springs Rejuvenation. I seen her running, so I jumped into the most current piece of news, and it didn't sound good to me. It didn't. I'm reading, and I'm going, okay, I guess maybe this is a good thing. But see, this company went through a reverse merger back in March. It's part of their description here. They used to be Avra Inc. They are now Springs Rejuvenation. They've changed the ticker. They've changed the name. It's a done deal. And the news that just came out reflects on that merger, and it didn't sound good to me. And yet, we've got the price up there at 0079 with 155% gains. So it seems to me the investors know exactly what's going on she is on the pink tier and current got both those green ticks looks outstanding now this company they merged with Springs rejuvenation and anti-aging they're out of Atlanta Georgia Springs they're working with stem cells that's I don't know a whole lot about it but that's what they're doing so what sort of volume was there today around that news another slow day what is going on here I mean I know it was a slow day on the market but this is under the radar too she's normally doing 70,000 shares she doubled it today at 150,000 but I mean that's nothing on the market is it and still she got hundred and fifty five percent gains do we dare hope for another low float I don't know folks yeah you know, maybe okay I do remember this one all right we've got Unrestricted tells us 112. Well, the unrestricted was wrong last stock we looked at. The float was right. And they tell us here the float is 44. Well, I did get the option to jump into their disclosure. This is their most recent financial disclosure. They tell us here the public float is 112 million. So this time the unrestricted shares would have been right. Uh, talk about confusion. Financials for this company. Are they making any money yet? yes they are and this is a good point to notice they are ending in January that's the end of their fiscal year they did three hundred and eighteen thousand dollars remembering those three zeros there that's for the whole year three hundred and eighteen now look at their quarterly there are three quarters they've had so far this year one hundred and thirty eight thousand one hundred eleven and one hundred and ninety four add those three up nine months worth of income you're at almost four hundred and fifty thousand dollars their annual is at 318 they are doing virtually 50 percent more revenue so far and they've still got three more months to go in this year so looks like things are heating up disclosures well we know they are current so all of their financials are current and down here nothing is current uh, March is the closest we get so let's jump on into that news so we got lots of news down here but I'm gonna focus in on the news I was reading the most current piece that came out here in September and then the one that well I had to read to make sense of this one but I'm gonna make it easy on you we'll look at the one that came out in March that's when it was actually in and then we'll look at this newest one so the one that came out in March that was March 24th it is about this merger we are delighted by the progress we have made since completing the merger between Avra Inc. and Springs Rejuvenation. We've spent the last year completing the steps required to become a new public company, expanding the customer base, and opening new locations. And some of the relevant bullets from this. In October of last year, we completed the merger with Springs Rejuvenation, a stem cell and anti-aging treatment company. Then in January of the following year, we purchased two C-Arm high-definition 3D imaging for direct visualization devices. In January 27, we entered into a partnership with Dr. Ann Shippey, who operates a clinic in Austin, Texas. And on the 24th, we entered into a lease for a new clinic in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Then in February, we announced that we had over 200% increase in our fourth quarter earnings compared to our third quarter, and we noticed that. 
Then on March 9th of this year, we completed the process required to change the name and the ticker to Springs Rejuvenation. All that's been done. We recognize that too. Then on March 15th, we partnered with American Top Team by providing stem cell therapies and treatments to their members and competitive athletes. So everything is going good here. They actually finished the merger in October and up to this point they've got new locations, they've increased their revenues, they've bought new equipment, everything's going good. So what possibly could go wrong? Well, you tell me what makes sense here. This came out September 21st. Springs Rejuvenation, formerly ARV, which is the public company, announced today that the management and Dr. Charles Perora, the founder of Springs Rejuvenation Stem Cell Therapy, who entered into a merger agreement in November of last year, have agreed that the companies will split and revert back to their pre-merger status. They're undoing it all. There's, it's a divorce, and they are splitting up the property as well. In the agreement, the private company, the private company, will retain the intellectual property of Springs Rejuvenation, including the name and the website and other related IP. Now that sounds bloody scary to me. They're getting all the IP. That is patent protection. That's where you make your money. The private company is taking that, not the public company that's staying behind. They're getting the websites. They're getting everything. The public company, what do they get? They will retain the clinics that they have developed in Atlanta, Georgia, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, including all the fixtures and equipment. Now check this out. Furthermore, the parties have agreed that the public company will file a corporate action with Fiender to obtain a new name and ticker symbol. They got to change their name now. You can't, you can't keep my married name. You got to get rid of it. So they just changed to SPRJ, Springs Rejuvenation, and now they're going to change it again to New Region Inc. The filing has already been submitted. We are developing new revenue streams, which include a wholesale operation and a new line of products for our clients. The change also eliminates nearly 400000 in annual overhead. I don't know. I mean, she did go up 155%, but the last piece of news is old, right? We didn't see any new filings. Now, I didn't jump over to Twitter. Maybe that's my fault. Maybe the company put something out today because the situation right now is that a lot of values got taken from SPRJ. There was a divorce. They've unmerged with the people they merged with when it was looking so great to everybody on the outside. I guess you have to live with somebody to know how bad it can really be. And now they're on their own with just the clinics. But what do they do without the IP? Are they going to be able to retain the revenue growth that they've been doing? I'm not real sure. But they did have a big bump today. Is it going to continue though? Let's go look at that chart. We are looking at SPRJ. That is a six month, four hour chart. Six months ago, we had a high of about a penny and a half. And here in uh, August, we had a low of double zero two. And right now we're at double zero eight, basically. She has been sitting in one area for a very long time until she fell to that low and has been bouncing off of that low. And she's pretty much been trying to get back to her standard back here. She got up on top of it, but couldn't hold it. Couldn't even hold her 50 day SMA on the four hour chart. Has fallen way down here to 0031 and had a nice bounce off of that floor. And even with that huge 153% gains, she's only getting in the neighborhood of where she fell from. Our technicals, she's had some strong growth here at the end of the day and all of the technicals show that she is pushing up still. But that's on a four hour chart. Let's get a closer view. So this is our 20 day view. She has been falling all 20 days except for today. She had a nice early bounce and then a big kick in the afternoon hitting that high of 0079. All of our technicals are excellent right now. Well, not perfect. I mean, we do have a push up on our PPO, but it is still under the pink. We need to get that up on top of that. We've got a straight line showing that our trend is continuing that we see here. Crossover just happened on the MACD power sign and it's pushing up towards the signal line now. And our RSI is steadily rising and at 57 right now. Five day, five minute. 
Well, she's not getting a lot of trading. <laughs> boy, oh boy, this is a five minute chart. And is that yesterday? That is Friday. So she had 10 minutes worth of trading today. Uh, what was it, 150,000 shares? Most likely, folks, honestly, this was two trades. Probably two trades. It may have been a couple more than that, but I'll bet you it wasn't a lot. Now, normally, you know me. I like to follow the stocks that have a lot of trades. The more trades, the more people I figure. And the more people, the more money being thrown into the pot. A better chance of me making some money. However, this one stood out today. It has had some news. I don't think that anything current has happened. We haven't seen anything, but she took a jump today. Why she took a jump today, maybe we never even touched on to it. Maybe there is something in Twitter. Maybe a court document came out. Maybe somebody, an insider, did a purchase. We didn't do a deep dive. There is more to learn. But I would keep my eye on her. She has already taken a big jump on silence. The companies made some big changes, but they did a deal with that one company that they gave stem cells to. We really don't know what's going on now since the divorce. We need to touch back and see what's going on. So SPRJ, they have submitted for a new ticker. The next time you look for it, it may not be SPRJ. Uh, we'll see what they change it to, and I'll try to keep you updated. Now, those first two stocks, folks, you have got to keep an eye on. VCXAW, that warrant at four cents. She had a strong support at a low average of $1, and it's currently four cents. That is a 2,500% gain just getting to a dollar. It had a 52-week high of $3.40. You're looking at... Uh, Oh goodness, almost 8,000% gains if it was to go to there. I'm not saying it is, but it could. Folks, I have seen these things run. There's a lot of ceiling on that stock. Keep your eye on it. They just had the merger. Things have got to get better. The other one, let me see if I can remember. IGID, super duper small float, 2.2 million. And this thing is running hard and fast. And the last time she took a giant leap, in one day she did 2,500% from two cents up to 51 cents. I would keep my eye on that one just because of the super duper low float and she's already starting to take off. Now would be a good time to look at her. And the other one, I don't know, surprise, surprise, surprise. I don't know what's gonna go on with SPRJ. She's changing her ticker, she's changed her business, she has had some deals, she's got some new locations. We need some new information. That's what we need. She hasn't got a great float. She is making money, but is that gonna continue the way it is? But right now, she's gotten attention for some reason. So we need to pay her a little attention too, and maybe we can cash in on it. Remember, folks, there's a lot of information out there. Don't be afraid to run around looking. You never know what you might find kicking something over. You're looking for one thing. You might find something else. DD is a treasure hunt, I swear to God. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.